Hello friends. Let's begin with work coordinate system terminology. That means here we are learn about coordinate system accesses to reference point. Let's begin. Reference point. Machine origin or peak zero. So remember machine origin. It is nothing but a fixed point set by machine tool builder. Usually, it cannot be changed. Any tool movement is measured from this point. The controller always remembers the tool distance from the machine origin. If you observe in the next slide, you will definitely understand the machine origin. So, in CNC, if you observe, there is a machine origin is here. Okay, so it is a set by a build any machine tool builder or CNC or NC machine tool builder, and it's having a program origin that is with respect to this, or with respect to tool origin is with respect to this machine origin. Here is also a machine origin that is where the all the tools and machines are kept at a one position, or it can be set at a different distance as well shown in the CNC lathe or in milling. Okay. Previously, let's go on previous slide. Program origin. It is a home position of a tool. Remember, program origin is home position of a tool. Where the tool is placed at a certain distance according to the position of the workspace. In case of CNC, same is in case of GMC also. Or vertical milling sensor. Okay. Program origin is the point where the tool starts for its motion while executing a program and return back at the end of the cycle. So after completion of cycle, it will go to back position on program origin. It will not go to machine origin. Remember, the program origin is very important. At the end of the cycle, tool will go to that particular program origin point. Not at a fixed zero. This can be any point within the workspace of a tool which is sufficiently away from the part. That means whatever the part is shown in this figure, you observe clearly this part is shown is here. After some part distance, we have to give a program origin, and that is said by a instructor or said by a program programmer. Okay, so. Here, in case of CNC lathe, it is a point where the tool change is carried out. Remember, what is happened in the machining? We have to complete one position. If we do the turning in the first case, and after turning, after end of the cycle, it will go to the program origin. And there, if we have to do do grooving operation, then next tool will be grooving. So that indexing will be happen and Next tool will come at the program origin. Remember this. So part origin, float origin, zero shift, work shift, data. The part origin can be set at any point inside the machine's electronic grid system. Usually, part origin needs to be defined for each new setup. So for every setup, it needs to be defined because it is also called a float zero, zero shift, work shift, and data. Datum position with respect to parts where where the machining actually started. So that is nothing but part origin or workspace origin. Okay. So if you observe that zero shifting allows the relocation of the part, and sometimes the part accuracy is affected by location of the part origin. So let's see in this figure. If you observe the machine origin is a fixed zero. In the both the case, okay. So in both the case, you observe that it's a uh, having a fixed a point. Machine origin having a fixed a point. Here in CN, in CLS, here in BMC, that is what machining origin. Then program origin. Program origin is which type? Program origin is set by the programmer at a particular line. Particular location, 
where at the end of cycle the tool will move to the back position that is having very small clearance that's it okay in both the case it will, you will observe there is a very small clearance meaning you will observe clear okay then a part origin if you observe that this is our cnc part in cnc part the point is always cylindrical that is hold in the chuck so that cylindrical chuck is having axis and that is part axis so that axis is at a center so if you observe properly in cnc lathe it is a back ended machine that means first you observe that front side there is a workpiece and at the back side there is a machine or there is a indexing of the tool taking place so the z position z position is always that spindle axis or job axis okay accordingly we have to measure the thing while x position is always a diameter or radius of a machine cutting okay so there are two axes are very important that is z that is length axis and x will be diameter to life diameter changes along the z length will be changed okay so that is also shown from as it is 0 0.2 here that from this to plus that means the tool will go to it will not cut any position and when it will go to minus side it will start the cutting the position of the tool so this is the one of the component which is need to be made from the particular cylindrical object and x axis will be positive when we are going a depth if we going to the depth that time it will be negative if we are moving backwards the z will be negative x will be positive okay so those things very necessary to understand by the same as in mean center also there is a one part origin okay that part origin will affect the whole machine or whole part program okay next axis convolution in axis convolution is nothing but a, how the axis are measured or how the axis are defined in the machine so x axis is shown on a work table it is a vertical meaning set that while z axis is most probably a tool axis Single axis or two axis is there axis, and y x and y axis are most probably vertical axis. Okay, so motion z x y, so those are nothing but we can measure in our uh, right hand ruler. Okay. So we have to remember an horizontal machining center. Horizontal machining work table is having z, and x and y axis will be given to the tool motion. So both the things are available. Axis designation: object in a space can have six degrees of freedom with respect to imaginary Cartesian coordinate system. That three in that three axes are linear moment, while three axes are rotary. Okay, remember this. So every position, if you observe in this case, the tool is having rotary axis. The work table is also having rotary axis. Okay, so it can be a five-axis one, so three linear and two rotary. Okay, so yeah, there are six, five, six, eight axis machines are available. It depends on how many number of degrees of freedom we are given. So most of the times we have to give only six degrees of freedom, and the different rotary axes are also given. Even sometimes machine table, sometimes two. The Machining of a simple part does not require all degrees of freedom. With the increase in degrees of freedom, complexity of hardware and programming increases. The number of degrees of freedom defines axis of machine. Axis interpolation means simultaneous movement of two or more different axes to generate a required control. In typical lathe machine, degrees of freedom is two, so it is called two-axis machine. While machine Milling machine is having degrees of freedom two and half, which means it is having two axes 
that can be interpolated at the time and that is remain independent so if you observe if you have a multi spindle machine in that time there are different axes so rotary axis will be denoted as a b c so whenever work table is moving along its axis that time it having b axis or if a tool is moving along its axis that time is having a axis so a b c like axis are given to the rotation of a spindle or rotation of the work table okay the principal axis are x y z along x y z the motion of the tool tool will be that but there are some incremental movements are there u v w with respect to previous part okay we have to give those new coordinates so that time it will be mentioned in the u v w and there are the tertiary also some of the times these are used p q r so most of the cases we are using only principal and secondary axis thank you so much hope you understand very well